I have something really important to say, which is that freedom of speech is not just for us. It is for all of us. That means the people that you disagree with most vehemently in their speech are the people it most applies to if you stand for this principle. It is not good enough to say I believe in freedom of speech for the views I like or the views that don't anger me. It counts only when you can also say I believe in the freedom of speech for the people who say the things that I detest. If you can't sit there and say that I don't like what you say, but by God I'll fight for your right to say it, then you're basically against the spirit of the First Amendment. It wasn't freedom of speech for the ideas we like. It wasn't freedom of speech for the ideas the majority accepts. It wasn't freedom of speech for only those things we consider decent. It was freedom of speech for anything that isn't shout fire in a crowded theater. If your speech does not cause direct harm, and I do mean direct harm, like if you insult someone and they cry, that's a bad thing. But that's not legislatable. That's not something you should crack down on. Or bad words. You don't like them? Too bad. People can say them. They should be able to say them because someone's hurt by them being said. It's not like the South Park episode joke where someone says a swear word too many times and a great demon is unleashed on the world and we all die. No, in fact, there is no harm from the type of free speech I'm talking about. Again, fire in a crowded theater is the exception I'm running with and that sort of thing. If you shout something with the direct intent to cause immediate harm or panic, then yes, that should be legislatable because you're using words as a weapon. And that is not what I'm talking about. Now, if you sit there and you give out a battle cry to your followers and say, hey, there's this guy and I don't like him and you know you have an audience, right? Let's say you're Glenn Beck and you say, we need to lynch this guy. We need to kill him. And you go into details and talk about how he needs to die and someone does it. Well, you shouldn't be charged with murder, but you should be charged. You, you weaponized your speech. You directly attempted to have someone harmed. That's basically soliciting murder for hire, more or less, except you're not offering to pay money, you're using your fame. And again, that is not what I'm talking about. The kind of speech I'm talking about is, let's say you are someone who supports homosexual rights, and you believe in free speech, then you must support the rights of the people to protest against gay marriage. You must support the people who condemn you for being an abomination. If they attack you directly, or they say, we need to kill you right now, let's do it, then yes, that's a completely different issue. But you must support their right to protest your existence. Besides, if the person speaking out against you is truly so idiotic, you should let them speak. Their words will make a quicker fool of them than anything you could ever do. If what you stand for is so right and you believe in it, don't be afraid to let the opposition speak, because if you are truly correct in what you say and it stands against the test of time, then their words will fall short and people will see the truth of your statement based on the fact that it was attacked and did not fall. If, though, you must resort to stifling other people's speech and their viewpoints, whether or not it is true, people will assume that your ideas are fallible and weak because you will not dare to let them stand up to scrutiny. Just something to think about.